Good morning, Church! Welcome to our Palm Sunday service. Next week will be Holy Week. Choose to spend it meaningfully. Participate in various activities prepared for everyone. For Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings, we will have Pastor Jebo Banzuelo to help us refocus on the values and perspectives of Christ in this time of testing with the theme, Reroute. It's free. Just register. For this morning, we will start with praise and worship to be led by Brother Joshua Ngo. Then we will have a testimony to be given by Sister Grace Tan. She is a member of GGC who currently resides in Texas, USA. And she also happens to be my aunt. After which, we will have an anthem by Elozai entitled, Shout for Joy, Jerusalem!
Brothers and sisters in Christ, today is Palm Sunday, and we remember this event as the time when the people were worshiping Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. And they were shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Let us also be one as we worship and praise our Lord wholeheartedly even in this difficult time. Psalm 34, 1-4 I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made creation groaning it is 
is a new creation coming. It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? He worthy of all blessing and honor and glory. Is He worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. Does a God intend to dwell again with us? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom this day. Oh, 
GGC family. My name is Grace Diutan. I am the older sister of Singson, Elizabeth, and Joy. 
I'm honored and humbled to share a testimony on prayer. I was blessed to be born and raised in a Christian family, so I have been praying all my life. I can truly testify that God hears all our prayer. Of course, God is not a genie. We don't get everything that we ask for, but God will give us what is best for us and according to His will. I have tons of answered prayers, but today I would like to specifically share about God's love and mercy on the birth of my fifth grandson, Easton, who was born on February 10, 2021. Last year, when our youngest daughter, Deandra, told us that she was pregnant with her third baby, we were overjoyed. Then, on that 12 week sonogram, the doctor said that the baby was measuring two weeks smaller, and they recommended genetic testing to see if there was any abnormality. My daughter Deandra and her husband Hansel didn't go for the genetic testing because there was some risk involved, and they have already decided that they will keep the baby no matter what. At that 20 week sonogram, the doctor discovered that Deandra had a single umbilical artery, which happens to only 1% of all pregnancy. Most umbilical cords have two arteries to supply all the nutrients and oxygen to the baby. So we pray for a healthy baby and also for baby to grow bigger. The doctor was planning to induce birth at 38 weeks because they say that if the baby is not growing much in the womb, it is be better for the baby to come out and grow outside the womb. The risk of the single umbilical artery, one of the risks is stillborn babies. Unfortunately, at 34 weeks, the doctor noticed that the placenta and umbilical cords were both aging already. So they were planning to give a steroid shot at 36 weeks to mature the lungs of the baby and induce birth at 37 weeks. That did not happen. When Deandra went for her regular checkup at 35 and five days, they did a sonogram and they noticed that the baby wasn't moving much anymore. So they were afraid that there might not be enough oxygen in the umbilical cord. So they perform an emergency C-section. When my husband and I were told about the C-section, we immediately prayed and I told our family and our pastor and his wife to please help pray. Thank God, the C-section went well and Easton was born alive at three pounds and 12 ounces. Praise God, he did not need any breeding devices or feeding tubes. He was able to breed on his own and he was able to suck a bottle. The doctor said that he will probably be in the NICU, which is the neonatal intensive care unit for about two weeks or more. So I asked all our family and friends to help pray for Easton during this critical time. And God answered in a big way. Easton was discharged from the hospital in 11 days, and he was four pounds when he was released from the hospital. Did God answer all my prayers? Yes, he did, but it was according to his ways. I pray for a normal pregnancy in the beginning, but this pregnancy was far from normal. 
but Easton was born healthy. I pray for a good sized baby, but Easton was born three pounds and 12 ounces. And yet now he is almost seven pounds and growing very well. When I was undergoing through the unknown from last year to this year, the only way I survived was through prayers. It is only when I was talking to God did He calm all my fears and worries. We will all go through trials in life. And when we do, it is like we are riding a train that is going through a deep, dark tunnel. In the darkness, we have no idea what is going to happen. But when we have Christ with us, He is in charge. We can trust Him. He is our conductor who, was, who will lead us through the dark tunnel. For anyone who is going through life trials right now, please hang in there. Cling to our Lord Jesus Christ and He will carry you through. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. Let us continue to pray for one another as we all go through this pandemic right now. Prayer is our lifeline. May God bless you all, and to God be all the praise and glory. Amen. Now Pastor Alvin will be leading us in the pastoral prayer and Brother John Andrew Go will be reading from the scriptures taken from Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11. For our message this morning, Reverend Rockman Will will be speaking on the topic, The Triumphal Entry. In the midst of this uncertainty, let us continue to fix our eyes on Jesus. Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let's all come to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you right now in worship, we acknowledge that you, you are King and Master of everything. We praise you because you are sovereign, all-powerful, and is in control of all things. We thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. 
We thank you because you always love us even in times when we draw away from you. Thank you because you are always ready to receive us back, to forgive us whenever we fall. Thank you because you care and you continually provide for our needs. In you we find wisdom and strength for each day and a refuge in times of our need. Lord, we come to you with concerned hearts for our country and our welfare. With the rise of COVID cases day after day, we feel overwhelmed. We have friends and families who have gotten infected. We pray for your comfort and healing upon them. We ask that you shower them with your great love and be the provider of all that they need. Lord, give us your peace and allow us to experience your presence so that we will not be anxious and lose heart. Teach us as you have been speaking to us from your word to all the more come to you in prayer for all our concerns and needs. For we know you hear us and will do what is best for us. We pray and ask for your mighty hand to work in our country. Show us your mercy and heal our land. We ask that this COVID crisis will soon come to an end. And we pray for our frontliners that you will bless them as they serve those who are ill. Protect them from the virus and give them your strength for each day. We pray for ourselves, our families, and our friends that you will take care of us and spare us from getting inflicted with the virus. We pray for our elderly. Grant them your grace as they stay home during the quarantine. and Keep up their health and help them to stay strong. And for all of us, teach us how we can make the most of our time to serve and live for you in spite of the pandemic. Use us to be your hands and feet that will serve and show love to those who are in need. Lord, we lift up to you our life camp this week. We thank you for the people who have given time to organize and to put things together. We now offer it up to you that you may use it to build up your church. We ask for good internet connection during this time. And we pray that you will allow us to experience your presence as we meet together for fellowship and to listen to your word. We also pray that you help us to use our time this week to remember and to worship you for what you have done on the cross. Your death has set us free and has given us a new life that will last forever. We praise you and thank you and give you all the glory, for you are the only God who is good and who loves us unconditionally. Lord, we also pray for our countrymen down south as the Bangsamoro Islamic freedom fighters are creating a chaos in Mindanao. We pray that you will keep the people safe. We ask that you will enable our armed forces to neutralize and restore peace in the area. May those who were displaced find shelter and support, and those in distress find peace and comfort in you. Please help our, our people in Mindanao to experience a lasting peace across the land. Our Father, we also commit to you our missionaries, Nelson and Rose Francisco, who are church planting in Mintal, Davao. We pray that your work in them will grow. Keep them close to your heart and let them be empowered by your spirit so that the work you have entrusted to them may bear fruit. Please bless them as they lead people in the study of your word. We also pray and live up to you their kids club ministry. May this work bring the gospel message to the ears of children and in turn reach the ears of their parents and family members. Lord, please soften their hearts so that they would call upon you and be saved in Jesus' name. And likewise, we ask that you keep Pastor Nelson and Ati Rose safe during this time, and that you would give them sufficiency for all their needs. And as we listen to your word today, please give us ears that are ready to listen, a heart that is humbled to learn, and a spirit that will be ready to respond in obedience. Use Pastor Rachmanuel as your mouthpiece, to speak your word to us. And may your name be glorified both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and caught with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, 
You shall say, The Lord needs them, and He will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them on their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Good morning. As the whole Christendom celebrates the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem today, we thank the Lord that He is preparing our hearts as He makes His way into the corners and crevices of our lives so that He can speak words of endearment and announce His Lordship amongst us. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Blessed Holy Spirit, our wonderful Lord and Paraclete, we thank you, O Lord God, that we look to you for your words and your heart to be among us, to be upon us, O Lord God, and seek, O Lord God, your, your blessing, O Lord, as we meditate on your word. May Jesus be honored, O Lord God, today and lifted high. We pray, Father God, that you will be honored today in the name of your Son, Jesus our Redeemer, our Savior, our Lord. Amen and Amen. Pax Romana, or the rule of Rome. The whole Israel was under the Roman rule when Jesus came. In fact, Paul said in chapter 4 of Galatians, he was born under the law, born of a woman. And so here, when Jesus came, it was during the Roman rule. But please allow me to further bring you back 400 years ago. Between the Old and New Testament, Malachi being the last prophet, and the arrival of, of uh, John the Baptist is a span of something like 400 years or the intertestamental period from 400 to 4 B.C. And during that time, many upheavals in the history, in global and even in Israel's history, came about. In, six, in 166 BC to 37 AD, this is what historians, biblical historians, call as the Maccabean and Herodian period. But during 165 BC, the temple was rededicated. In 167, the Maccabean Revolt began. In 168 BC, Antiochus polluted the temple by sacrificing unclean animals there. And so, here you are. Here is a historical background preparing the approach of people as they look upon this so-called Galilean, this so-called Jesus of Nazareth, come in and enter Jerusalem. When you look at our text in Matthew 21, verses 1 to 3, it says here that as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with their colt by her, and tie them, bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill, verse 4, what was spoken through the prophet, Say to the daughters of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, 
the fowl of the donkey. Isaiah 62 verse 11 was quoted here actually. In this text, the Lord has made the proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes, your savior comes. 700 years it was prophesied through Isaiah. And also in Zechariah chapter 9, this was quoted in chapter 9 verse 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter, daughter of, of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. What does this mean? When you read Jeremiah 22, you see kings come in the city mounted on, an, on a stallion, not for Jesus. This indicates that Jesus, as he was riding this donkey, as he was riding this fowl of a donkey, entered Jerusalem as the king of peace, riding not the horse, which is the symbol of a conqueror, but the ass. This is the work beast of the poor. You know, if it, if it is in the context today, Jesus, if he is entering Manila and he would look at it as if he is entering Jerusalem, he will be riding a tricycle. The work beast of the poor. And so it was presented here, going back to the text, that our Lord Jesus a humble king entering Jerusalem, indicating that Jesus is the king. The king is entering. The humble king is entering, seated on a work beast of the poor. Also, in this text, in Matthew 21, verse 9, let's read. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, the son to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so here you are, the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloak on them, and Jesus sat on them. A large crowd spread their cloak on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Thus, we have this so-called Palm Sunday. It was on a Sunday, and people were shouting, quoting Psalm 118, verse 25 and following, saying that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of David. In Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11, the word Hosanna, even here, as it was mentioned, Hosanna means God saves. Literally meant here as an acclamation or shout of praise honoring Jesus as the Savior. It seems like they were acknowledging him as the Messiah, as the Savior, and shouting, do save, do save. But the understanding may be different from his from the agenda of Jesus. He was coming as the savior of Israel and the savior of the world. But from their point of view, their vantage point, being under the Roman rule, he can be perceived by the people as the liberator from the Roman rule. And so a hermeneutical struggle is found here. It could be that Jesus was welcomed here in the context of Roman rule to be their liberator. And so if you will read into it, you can hear the people say, be like Judas Maccabeus, be like Judas Maccabeus, saved us, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, be like Judas Maccabeus who liberated Israel 
from Antiochus during that time. And here we see people shouting, do save, God save, save us and liberate us from the Roman rule. It is a socio economic and political agenda of the crowd. And so we paused for a while. We see and ask questions, three important questions, vis-a-vis -vis the hermeneutical understanding or the interpretation of people or the crowd gathered in Jerusalem. What are the three important questions? Number one, is the entry of Jesus in Jerusalem God's agenda? One, is it God's agenda? Two, is it God's timing? And three, is it God's method or way? Agenda, what's the goal? Timing, is it God's moment? And thirdly, is it God's way or God's method? To remember this, I will call it God's ATM, Agenda, Timing, and Method. And so, here we see, is it God's agenda? And the answer is yes, because it fulfills the Old Testament prophecy in Isaiah 62 verse 11. And it also fulfills, as written by Matthew, this is the fulfillment of what was written in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Say to the daughters of Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle, riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. Jesus was coming in as king. He has announced it but not from the perception and understanding of the crowd. Yes, they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. But theirs was probably a different hermeneutics or a different interpretation, thinking that this guy from Galilee will liberate them from the Roman rule. But is it God's agenda? Yes, because it is also an announcement that the Messiah of Israel has come. Matthew chapter 21 verse 10 says, Jesus, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stared and asked, who is this? Sino ba ito? Who is this? Coming from Galilee to Jerusalem, mounted on a donkey, the fall of a donkey. And yet, it is a fulfillment of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And Matthew, the gospel writer, affirms this, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh, Hosanna in the highest. Who is this? The people asked. The crowd answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So from Galilee, moving towards Jerusalem, he entered as a humble king, announcing that the king has arrived, the Messiah has arrived. But then, when you look at the other gospel writer, this, he was actually rejected. Who is this? Rabbi, in Luke chapter 19, verses 39 to 40, Rabbi, rebuke your disciples. They have actually rejected the quote from Zechariah 9, 9. Rebuke your disciples. He is not the fulfill. It's actually a rejection, a rejection of the king. He laments over Jerusalem in Luke 19, verses 41 and following. And the king here was rejected. This was not their expectation. 
they were probably thinking that after he arrived in Jerusalem, he will move immediately and conquer the enemies of Israel. This was on a Sunday, the Palm Sunday. The following day, what did Jesus do? Monday, the second day of the week, in Luke 19, verses 45 and 46, he cleansed the temple. When you look at these events, this is what Jesus does also in the lives of the New Testament people up to now. That as we receive Jesus into our heart and call him our Savior, our Liberator, our, our Lord, who took away the sins, our sins, then we sense the cleansing presence of Jesus do its part in our lives, in our mind, in our heart, and in our actions. He cleanses the temple. As he enters our temple, he cleanses it so that he could stay in the temple forever. Is it God's way or method? Yes. Does this align with the interpretation of God's people? Not necessarily. They have a different agenda, but the, the timing or the moment is right. He cleanses the temple the following day. But the king was already rejected. He laments over Jerusalem and says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I love to see you as a mother chicken will embrace his chicks, but you would not let me. Now, your land is left desolate. It is a very sad proclamation of Jesus over Jerusalem according to Luke, the Gospel of Luke. And so, what do we see here? We answer the question, is it God's agenda? Is it God's method or God's way? Yes. Is it man's method? No. Is it God's agenda? Yes. Is it man's agenda? No. Third question, is it God's timing? The entry to Jerusalem was on a Sunday. One week from Sunday, it will quickly move to towards Thursday where they celebrated the Lord's table. And then on Friday is the celebration of what they call as the Passover. It was on a Friday that the Lamb of God was sacrificed. Exacto the timing of the Passover when Jesus shouted that Friday, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He said, it is finished. The debt has been paid already. And so, is this God's timing or God's moment? Yes. And Palm Sunday will introduce Jesus to the many people of Jerusalem and then later on find that the culmination of this is the cross. He will be sacrificed as the Lamb of God. And this took place during the time of Moses. And they were celebrating the Passover. The feast of the Passover is to commemorate the exodus from Egypt. It held on the 14th of the first month Nisan or Abib. This is April today. 14th of the first month Nisan or Abib or this is our April today. Thus, he celebrated the Lord's table on a Thursday, saying, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. In Hebrews 11.28, we see Moses, by faith, he kept 
the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn will not touch the firstborn of Israel. And this had been carried on until this time. Celebrating the Passover, they would kill the lamb and they would eat his body. Celebrating the Good Friday was the time that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. Is it God's agenda? Yes, it is. Is it God's way or method? Yes, it is. Is it God's timing or moment? Yes, it is. By way of reflection, I have mentioned three important things. And then we may want to apply it in our lives. Whenever we make decisions, whenever we desire things, we could always ask these three fundamental questions. Is it God's agenda or goal for you? What is God's goal for you? God's goal for us is to be like Jesus. Christ-likeness is the overarching goal of disciple-making. Disciple-making is not the goal. It is a means to the goal so that all of us will move towards the image of the Son and that He will be the firstborn among many brethren, among many brothers and sisters. And so asking this question, is it God's agenda? If it is your agenda, then think again. There is another person who proposes his agenda, and that is Satan. Satan's agenda is to always discredit the work of the Lord. The work of Satan is to dishonor God. We don't want that in our ranks, in our lives, in our, in our family. But you can shift without discerning if it is God's agenda for you or it is your own agenda. So we have three sources. God's, your agenda, and the enemy. Which one would you prefer? In the text that was read, is, is it God's agenda that Jesus entered Jerusalem? Yes, it is. He now enters into the hearts of many as we celebrate Palm Sunday. And he continue to bring you to a, a, an interactive posture and ask you, would you like God's agenda in your life? Secondly, is it God's timing? Whenever you're moving towards God's agenda and you know for sure this is what God wants, but then just like Abraham, God said, I will give you, give you a son. And through you, many will be blessed through you. I will give you a son. And then in the middle of waiting, he moves towards his own agenda and says, probably this is what God wants. The timing is now. And so he moves ahead with his wife. And then Ishmael was birthed. Ishmael was born, where we get the global religion, Islam. Is it God's agenda? God wants a child for me, according to Sarah and uh, Abraham. Is it the timing of God? Yes. So they went ahead. But lo, it was not God's timing. Is it God's timing for you for that decision? Or is there an incubation period yet to come so that you wait patiently because Abraham became a father at the age of what? 99 to 100. Probably a span of something like 25 years of wait. How long have you been waiting that the pandemic is over? We are only here for one year. And so... When God exiled his people, they were quarantined in 
Iraq in Babylon for 70 years. And we are up and feel we are drowning already after 12 months. Is it God's agenda? Is it God's timing or moment? Or are you lagging behind? We need to be in stride with the Holy Spirit so that we move in rhythms with the Holy Spirit. A book proposes that we dance with the Lord. And in this dance, he sets the pace and we follow his steps. We are in rhythm with him. So here you are. The timing is of utmost importance too. And thirdly, for our reflection and life application, is this God's method? When I was in uh, Richardson Merrill, which became Merrill Dow Chemicals, I always hear the big boss say, you guys, whenever you are trying to perform, walk the ramp. Walk the ramp. It has been instilled in every one of us so that we have to prove our worth and walk the ramp. Show your, your potential. Flex your muscles, your political muscles. There is what they call amongst the medreps, power dressing. And so you walk the ramp. You walk like a king. You strut like a rooster. You walk towards Jerusalem seated, not on a donkey. You enter the city on a stallion, victorious one. But the scripture says, tell the daughter of Jerusalem, your king comes to you riding on a donkey, the work beast of the poor. Could you imagine the Lord Jesus riding a tricycle to visit us? Or riding a bike, pedaling his way towards you? I don't know. You would not even probably allow our pastors to do that. But here is an example, a perfect example of what it is to be so secure with what you have, even if you are the king of the universe. Is this your method or way? Is this God's way? The time is coming when the days of the small things will come. And then those whom we call unlikelies, will lead the shepherds, will lead the people. There will come a time when the lowly will lead the mighty. And this is what we call the great reversal. If there is the two great statements like the great commandment, you shall love the Lord with all of your heart. And then the great commission, go and make disciples of all nations. There is the great reversal. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Is this your method or God's method? Is this your way or his way? Or is this the enemy's way? Three important things we could glean from the text in Palm Sunday. Is this God's agenda? Is this God's timing is this God's method. Allow me to say this is God's ATM. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the power of your word. It does not return to you empty. It will accomplish the very purpose for which it was sent. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for the example of your son, of what it is to be a shepherd and king at the same time. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, that our king comes and he is returning to take his rightful place, O Lord God, in the center of the universe, in the center of creation. This time, O Lord God, 
as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Heavenly Father God. We look forward to his coming back. This we pray in Jesus' most precious, precious name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless us. Let us pray. Brothers and sisters, receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And amen.